All right, everyone. Congrats to Jungle Storm on that run. That was great. We're going to be running Act Razor Any Percents, or otherwise known as Story Mode, which is basically the full game. I am Sin, and this is my favorite game. I've been in Retrothon four times now. Uh, well, this will be my fourth time. It's always a great show. Uh, let's get started. I uh, actually just want to take a moment here to... I want to dedicate this run to a beloved uh, viewer and uh, member, a uh, big fan of this game, uh, Avantgarde. I'll do uh, AV for short. Um, who actually uh, passed away last month. It was pretty heartbreaking. But I think it just embodies a lot of what we do um, and what like this event is about. I, w I just want to post one of his quotes. Uh, the first thing he ever said in my chat. I remember when we used to play this at a friend's house. I think we stopped because a new TV program called The X-Files came out. Uh, just, just a really funny person um, showed up every night and it just was a positive experience for him. And I think like just Retrothon as a whole, uh, just bringing back that nostalgia is what this is all about. So this is gonna go out to Avantgarde. And, and everybody here, like just the fans, I mean, the people that are here and the communities and, this, and what we grow over time. And you know, it's not just about speed running necessarily. It's, it's, it's about the communities that we build and, and people that are here so and we're sharing in this together all right but with that said I will take you through the speed run and we're gonna kick Tanzer's ass so let's go so time's gonna start on the first uh, menu So first thing first, set the message speed to zero. That is the key thing here to make things go fast for simulation. Because there's going to be a lot of text that we need to mash through. Yeah, this is Actraiser for the Super NES. I think a couple people might know this track. This is Fillmore. And you're going to see a mix up of action and simulation in this run. You're going to see a lot of slash jumping, what we call that. That extends both the range and distance, uh, the range and height of our jumps. And it's going to be required for certain jumps. Uh, time is running here. So first boss. We're gonna fight from the back. Also, it's morning here, but good morning everyone. I recognize a lot of faces in chat. My timer is going on this side, I'm not sure. Sure they'll sort it out. This is on the actual uh, console. Okay, so simulation is actually pretty tense. Uh, we have to farm souls, which are those little orbs that are floating back to the shrine, as many as possible on each start of the uh, simulation here. So I am farming, which is a pretty patented farming method from Straveris early on uh, when I started learning this game. And we're going to be building in two directions. That's what you may notice here going back and forth for. Which seems a little weird, but it's actually the most optimal way to build towards these layers. Because you can only advance 
your roads if there's houses on the squares. So we, we achieved the population or soul requirement, which is 26 on this line here. And as you can see, they filled out the squares pretty nicely. Also, there's cute horses, as Nemesis likes to say. <laughs> Again, building in two directions. So each of these construction cycles is 24 seconds, give or take, using miracles, things like that. And the current route I'm using is the 39 cycle route. It's going to take 39 construction cycles to get to level 10, which is the requirement to unlock North Wall, which is the last area. So each area, hey, leave my people alone. Each area has a level requirement. The next area is level two. So we won't even be able to get to Blood Pool without going to level two yet. So like, at this point, we have just enough time to seal these last two layers in one construction cycle, which is basically that hourglass that's ticking down. But we are going to get both on this cycle. A lot of mashing. This, this is why text message speed zero is important. And the people of Fillmore learn to build bridges on their own, and they're going to give us bridge tech, which we're going to take here. Oops, that was not the offering menu. <laughs> Don't want to combat yet. Okay, let's go. This is my, uh, Favorite game, main speedrun, and I absolutely love the building part, but we, we have been playing a lot of the pro mode as well. It's It helps in, uh, in the action, you know, practicing the action stages too. So each act, uh, each area has two acts. Uh, this is... Uh, second act, Fillmore. In the Japanese version, it's known as Filmone. We're gonna try a fast fall here. We didn't get it. It's basically a two frame window to wide press the moment you leave a ledge. But the movement's a little finicky in this game. Because you have like a movement frame roll. And depending on that movement frame roll, you might not even be able to get. Okay, and that's the wall clip. <laughs> This is the only major glitch that we abuse in the game. Uh, it allows us to clip into the wall when we take damage, and we can just continually jump up the wall. So that was first try. Um, Bismarck, another runner of the game, came up with an easier method to do those wall clips. It makes it well, about 80% reliable now, where it used to be much lower. And we just win a damage war against the Minotaur, and everything's good. I, I actually have no idea how to fight the Minotaur without doing the damage war. It'd take a very long time. So you can buffer inputs. So we're just going to buffer B here and go right to menu. And we're out. We don't even have to hear the thank you messages. We just go right to blood. So this area, this area is kind of funny. Um, whoever, they didn't really finish construction on these docks or it's just falling apart. Plenty of places to fall into the grape juice. 
Um, especially on the boss. That was good, we got under that rock. And... A lot of rock throwers. So there we jump high, so we despawn two of those flying fish. I'm gonna come up to the boss. We jump start. Okay. Still killed them on the left side. We missed a couple hits. That is the Manticore fight. And I call, it's like a dance. It's a pretty tough fight. It's very easy to fall in the hole there, in the, in the little gap. It's like a like a pinball machine. Of course, people are born from lightning. It's like Karnoff. That's exactly how it starts. All right, so this area, we're gonna use the two offerings that we got from Fillmore, the bridge tech, so they can build lower, plus the strength of an angel. Again, we're building in two directions, and we're farming souls. Now, while miracles are uh, occurring, you can basically kill monsters freely without the timer ticking. So, also part of the speedrun tech is to minimize the amount of miracles you use, but also timing them correctly so you can farm souls while they're, while they're happening. I don't need a lot of souls right now, I'm pretty good. We just need to get to 26 again. So, I can slow down a little bit here. These monsters don't really do much, fortunately, uh, in the any percent run. Normally they'll be attacking a lot of things, trying to fry houses. In this run, they're pretty docile. And yes, there's a little boy, Teddy, who's going to make an appearance here. Shortly. The good thing about simulation, it's all scripted, you just have to memorize it. Everything from the squares the houses get built on, the, the layout, everything, is exactly the same every time. So about half the run is completely scripted, no RNG, just memorize how to build. Um, and there are tutorials. Simulation is constantly being uh, developed. It's, it's slowed down a bit, but uh, Crow, like the whole straight, like all these previous runners had put a lot of effort into routing simulation. Of course, the, the tasks by Dunius and Zinnax for uh, for any percent. Just really long history in this game. So here's Teddy. We gotta get some bread. So Teddy's actually, he didn't really run away necessarily. I mean, he's out there inspecting the lake, trying to figure out what's going on with it. And he finds the skull, which is basically the secret to restoring the lake back. So Teddy saves the day here. Like the, the people are all worried about him. Meanwhile, Teddy's like out there Getting the, getting work done. I'm gonna see if I can get this glitch. No. So you can actually kill a bat the moment it's the frame is leaving a screen, and the soul won't return back to the shrine. It'll despawn the uh, bats permanently. You still have to seal the lair though, so it's just fun. But it's a glitch I happened to cross. We have to fill out a few more squares here. While you're away from a, from an area, the building continues as long as you've cleared Act 2. So again, we need our population over here to get to 1900. So that's how the routing kind of works for Sim. 
We want to make sure all the building that's taking place uh, is giving us the most uh, population per area. But we don't. We can definitely leave a lot of squares blank. We're not going for 100% here. All right. So once you seal the final layer, you have Act Two unlocked. Mode Seven. Ayano Kashiro uh, mentioned they were forced to put Mode Seven into the game. They're very active on Twitter. Uh, but since this was a release title, they were forced as a business to, to make Mode 7 work somehow. I think they made good choices with it. So there we got a quick fast fall, leaving the ledge. Here we could just jump on spikes, in the Japanese version those would kill you instantly. Couple swag boosts there. Slash jumps to get over this. Again, with, with regular jumps, you might not make it. And we're managing our health here, very important, because we have to do a lot of damage boosting. And we got the Gelivator. This is one of the harder wall clips. There's a new strat in the next room called the Skelevator, but in any percent, we don't have enough health to do it. So we're just going to take the new box up. We are going to try for the Fast Apple here, which Bismarck came for a setup. Uh, came this up. There we go. Nice. And the first boss now that has RNG. The Zeppelin. That's a good start. Let's see if we get another good one. Maybe 183? Okay, nice pattern. 183, we are ahead now. On splits. Let's go. <laughs> you want to finish in high spots? We could sub 58. I've been very close to sub-58 runs, so we are trying for a world record improvement right here. The RNG will decide. We have to wait till level 4 before we can go to the next area, so we're just going to kind of chill. I see Zahn there, I see Nemesis, Yo Captain Gordon, Pirate, Angle Storms, Hang Around, Lux. Osteoclave, Osteoclave made the practice round for this game and the randomizer. Really good stuff. Adopted, thank you. Hey Jokobo. <laughs> we get we get a couple breaks here and there in the run, which is which is kinda nice. It's kinda nice. We gotta wait for these level ups and there's no inputs. Just a few sprinkled in. Let's go. So Cassandora, um, this may remind you of like a Super Star Wars level. I mean, Yusu Kashiro also took a lot of inspiration from John Williams in terms of music. But just the, the design of this level, plus the last boss being called Dagba, it's... got the Star Wars feel. You can just jump over Cacti. Damage boost into Cacti. A lot of slash jumps, not just for effect. Now some really hard jumps. Got it. That one's really scary. So is that one. Uh, 
Okay. Now the next level of RNG, Stardust. So we want Stardust to kill this boss right now. Come on. Nope. That was poor. <laughs> and couldn't even get an extra cycle. So Stardust RNG, um, we have a little emote called Stardust Please, which is basically the, the, the dude dancing and the Stardust just hitting every spot that the dude isn't. Because that's basically what Stardust is like. <laughs> Completely random. And it's make or break for this run, uh, at least at this point for me. But we're okay, I mean, we're like plus 2.3 on splits, which is not too bad considering. And yes, this is the daylight. I am mainly a uh, nighttime streamer. But here we are. Okay, again I'm farming uh, souls, which is basically the routine for every uh, simulation. We're gonna use our wheat upgrade here. Once you use it on the first Uh, field, all the next fields will have it. It's actually rice. I don't know, it got translated to wheat in the US version, but it obviously looks like rice. Anyway, like, you know, with the water and stuff. <laughs> now this, this place is probably the most boring of the simulation, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't flood the wheat fields. We just send a lot of rain. We basically like form the Las Vegas strip right here. Yeah, you might notice this uh this villager over here. Well for those that haven't played this game, um this villager they want you to, you know, rescue this villager out here that have wandered off into the desert. But apparently the villager has the plague. And is already dead when you get there. So, of course, they bury the person with the plague right next to the shrine. And everybody gets the plague. So we are not going to save this person. We are going to leave them in quarantine. Maybe... No, we're not going to do anything inappropriate to the corpse. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Trust me, it's just... There's really nice music here if you do save the villager. Save the villager, but... We're doing, we're doing more good than harm. So yeah, here we go. At this point, we have to we can only advance one at a time here. There's no other way around it. So it's gonna be like a couple minutes before we get to the final layer. Oh yeah, and there's a pyramid that was hidden under the sand that we uncovered. I'm sure it's fine. The Japanese version it has the all-seeing eye on it, but that stuff was censored in the US version. So, I've been running the game for five years. Uh, I've been playing it since my childhood. It's been an absolute pleasure playing this game. I would highly recommend it. If you haven't like if you haven't played through any of the quintet games, they are just great games. Soul Blazer, Terranigma, or 
two of my other favorites. Actraiser 2 is pretty good too. Yeah, Actraiser is best Razor. I mean, it's it's obviously it doesn't have the same charm as the original, but it's good. Robotrack, yes. Robotrack's music loops were a little short. Didn't quite hit the budget on the music compared to some of the other games, but it was still fun. We had we had to wait for that road. It's, it's pretty important. We need every square here. All right. This is the very very mummy pyramid theme level. And I swear they don't wrap mummies with their legs like individually. Because that just makes them be able to walk here. And that's not good. So we're gonna go for the pyramid jump here. We can snap and first try. Wow. Okay. So that's like a really hard jump. <laughs> Two frame. And we couldn't get the wall clip though. So that's fine. Okay, <laughs> yeah, in the Japanese version, if you miss that jump, you die because you land in spikes, which are instant kill. In the US version, you don't die, you have to try it again, but you just start losing time. That saves seven seconds, so that jump's like, key. So here, the elevator we have to grab is on a screen timer. We just gotta get there by 172. Plenty of time. This is the ghost jump. This ghost rider helped me practice that one. And another little swag jump. Oh. So here's where Stardust should do a good job because the hitbox on this thing is insane. Nope. Wow. <laughs> okay. That is the worst Stardust I've ever seen on the Pharaoh. So Stardust is a little OP because if it hits the ground in the hitbox, it does like three hits versus one, like just a pass through hit. So it should basically just wreck everything that has a hitbox near a ground or the wall. That's why the Pharaoh is like right in the corner. And it was terrible. And I have no control over that. So we returned back to Fillmore. Like, we, we totally ditched the people at Cassandora now. We're never going back. We return here. This is what makes the 39 cycle route work. Because they're going to build in Cassandora while they're building here as well. And we get a population bonus. So, because remember, we got to get to like, we have to get to level 6 now. For Atos to unlock, we need to get to 950 here, or at 874, which is this number. So this is the local population, 286, and then this is the global population, 874. So a couple uh, construction cycles here. And this was one of the things like Crow uh, came up with, which is, you know, dodging away to the other areas to get the population going. Watch the cute little dog, too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they'll come back. We're, we're, we're out of here anyway. There is a hidden icon in the game that wasn't used, and it's a dog. And a dog and dog food. That's according to the cutting room floor. Don't know what the dog would have done. So this is Atos. This place is awesome. It's one of my favorite stages. It's like mounds of cinnamon or nutmeg in the background. 
We have birds that we can't really identify. Maybe they're albatross. We got spicy meatballs flying out of the pot from the lava. More of the Goonies grandmas flinging rocks. And this Tengu that looks like Doc Brown. So we're gonna try to do a fast climb here. A lot of de-boosting through the ledges. One, two. Okay, didn't get that one. And didn't get that one. Let's see if we can jump over the volcano. Uh, nope. That's a uh, another like two frame jump that requires a slash jump and a edge boost. But there's no setup for it in uh, any percent. You just have to hope you were landing on the right pixel or jumping from starting from the right pixel. So here's the first I uh, the first time you're gonna see the sword beam. It's pretty cool. Uh, later on, you're going to see this fight without the sword beam. Uh, when Telio runs the promo, so you'll see how harder it is. The sword beam does two damage per hit, makes that fight really easy. It's still scary though, because those platforms are not large. <laughs> and, and and because of the movement frame rule, like you'll just get a four frame boost, and you can just walk right off the ledge. So now we're gonna build again in. Uh, Three directions, actually. All the directions. Yo, Bryce. Yo, this one. And we're farming enemies. This is, we need to get up to 22 kills here. So while we're clearing the, uh, the rocks. Doing this counterclockwise, clockwise killing. Another patented farming method. And I'm, I'm, it's, it's not necessarily easy to line up the arrow shots here, but I'm used to it. Like just where to position yourself for each shot. There we go. So we got the 22. Like, it, it took a lot of work to get to where it's at. If I was to come up short, they wouldn't build the houses on every square, and we'd basically lose like 24 seconds, so... And I was playing this on a CRT that the edges were cut off, and I couldn't tell where the monster, like the monster on the screen didn't really show. So it was like no way to shoot them early. It's fun times. You've since addressed that. Since we're so ahead of the speedrun, um, horses were supposed to spawn in the ranches, but they haven't. So. One of the villagers gets injured sealing the lair, and you can see that villager standing there. His dying wish is for the master to send the master's tears, so we're supposed to send rain, but that would cost five and a half seconds. So, sorry buddy, <laughs> you're not going to get your wish. But 
the population doesn't even decrease by one when that villager dies. So, I don't know. I think it's just a ploy. I think, I don't know. Because when you start an area, the, the population is two, which are the first two people. But they don't... They don't count down uh, when, when that villager dies. So don't feel so bad. I think it's just... Just one. Just a joke. Anyway. We do use every miracle in the speedrun, so we had to send a wind for the windmill. If you fry the windmill though, they don't need the wind, but it's not gonna save time. <laughs> the angel has more confirmed kills than the, uh, the master, by the way. We do a lot of slaying with this angel. The angel of death. going to join uh now we're going to the lake of fire and fry where bad runs go when they die this place oh boy hopefully we're not going to drink any uh of the ragu or eat any of the ragu <laughs> Enemy knows. Enemy knows the song. The little lag master twist there. Oh! Bad clouds! damage boost here and we're through that is a very tough level come on stardust show show the oh. stardust is not the hero today <laughs> you could kill the fire wheel with with fire, I guess it doesn't quite make sense, but you can kill it in like in one uh, Stardust. But today, Stardust has failed on every uh, on every boss so far. Yeah, or aura is a good uh, a good spell. You use aura in 100% at the end, but it it costs too much to get in any percent. Aura is the best spell in the game because it's consistent for damage. So this little villager just climbs the mountain in like a toga and sandals. And we're gonna get a magic scroll and the uh, fleece. And there's sheep. So at this point of the game, um, there's actually no inputs. We can we can just chill. We got to get to 15. We got to wait till uh, 1500 population. So we're just kind of hanging out here. So like what what like a speed run with an intermission? It's just perfect. It's half, just just about halfway. Can't go wrong. The birth of the people music. Earthbound, it's like that Earthbound run was uh, great. I actually, I haven't played. I played through Earthbound the first time last year, and uh, I missed out. I, I, I like to do an RPG a month, so to catch up on all the RPGs I haven't played. Once, like. 
because there's so many good speedruns of stuff and I can't watch because I don't want spoilers, so... Finally caught up on Earthbound, so I was able to enjoy that run. Alright. To the jungle. So this, this area is a little tricky because there's fog on the ground. Um, there's enemies popping out. All these uh, jumps are pretty much calculated. Here we're going to try for a little new strat, a little back turn and get it. One more fancy wall clip here. There we go. Second try is really good. So you can just walk over this wall here. The, the game doesn't care where you transition to the next screen. Uh, it was a pretty big find very early on in Actraiser speedrunning. These guys have eyes on their chest. And they're scary. So this boss, this is Raffle Lasher. Pretty annoying boss, but... Wall clip makes quick work. There's a vile plume in the background. Pokemon fans. Which is of the Raffalasia plants. Yeah, so if you jump off the edge of the screen, you die. It's like falling into a pit. But you do want to be high on the screen on every screen exit because you float back up to the Sky Palace. You shoot back up. So here, we want to cast Earthquake immediately, and then I got to farm SP. Hey. This game is very, like, theatrical, and, you know, like, you're, you're coming down from the heavens, so those that, like, don't understand the lore here, uh, it's basically God versus Satan, or Master versus Tanzra. And, you know, the Sky Palace is basically the heavens, and you're sent down to, you know, everything comes down from there. Wipe out the enemies that have been uh, brewing, return the souls. Restore, like, the people's faith in, in their god. It's very... Like, Quintet had that theme in, in, in their games. made sure there that, that there was that flow. However, in this area, there's a second shrine. This is where the false god lives. So apparently, somewhere along the way, we got a little too boring, and the people were like, you know what? This other god's kind of cool. So they're gonna go worship the other god. <laughs> I mean, they do have a better shrine, I think. This one's a little stuffy. This one's kind of nice. I think this is like Anchor, Anchor Watt a little bit. Yeah, the nerve. They're probably still upset that we didn't send our tears. What's up, cool? I don't know if I'm so good. So, again, there's all this building in two directions. Oh, and if you didn't earthquake right away, well, you'd basically flatten all these level 1 houses. So I guess the game was like, and they don't really tell you 
So I guess the developers are like, yeah, you might realize, oh, you need to connect these islands and use an earthquake later. And now you'd probably use it. And you would devastate this area. But that's why it's the first thing we do when we get here. You gotta keep an eye on these little bastard dragons, because they could fry a house while I'm not paying attention. They do get a little aggressive on this area. And these two. Okay. Nice. Behaving. Okay, nice. So this is the last area we have to worry about population. Because after this is North Wall, we just got to get to North Wall. If if there was a way to get to North Wall without the level requirement, we would do it. We, we'd go there immediately. That we, we wouldn't worry about all this population. But this is perfectly scripted. We're at 1812. We're going to get to like 1908. In the next uh, cycle, and everything's perfect. And here they are, worshipping the false god. They're all evil. I should just fry these houses right now. <laughs> but now we don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Alright. Let's go. So, hidden in this level was an apple that nobody knew about for like 30, whatever, 25 years? 30 years? It's not in any Nintendo Power, not in any game FAQ. No speedrunner knew about it until like a couple years ago where Bismarck uh, found it. So it allows us to take every damage boost here and not worry about health. Also, health does refill at the end. So health refill would take time. So the apple is just a basic win-win. And it is hidden right here. The Bism apple. There it is. There's Bismarck. Bismarck knows the apples. So Kalia has like a 1 in 8 chance of throwing lightning. We got pretty bad RNG. And the Stardust wasn't good either. <laughs> so Kal so Zeppelinol, Kalia, Wyvern, those are the three big RNG bosses. And then on top of all that, Stardust. So it's been quite a journey in improving times in this game. But I, uh, I run this every Friday, uh, at least any percent. We try and we a month ago we, we did improve 5812. Keep keep going. I love this track by the way. It's one of my favorite levels. We're also getting boosts off these slopes. It's another tech speedrun tech. Whoa, eyeball. Eyeballs are RNG. Got the water skip. Make sure make sure you're all paying attention to see later if Telio goes in the water there or not. Make sure you're paying attention on this level for the next next run. 
No dips in the water allowed. Okay, so there was a, another little wall clip that I found. It didn't, didn't, didn't require damage, just line up under the water. Get that boost. Here we also don't really care about health. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Hopefully not. So this is the Murfly. Strictly RNG fight. Come on. Nope. I, I didn't expect Stardust to do anything good. hasn't the whole run, so... But just keep in mind, it's it's been a good run. I just, I, it's out of my, it's out of my hands. <laughs> no matter how, how good you play the level, it's the Stardust doesn't want to hit. And it's like five to ten second loss on each, um, nothing you can do. So here we're going to use the fleece. Fun fact, you don't actually need the fleece, there's a way to skip it. But it takes longer. Like, there's a, you know, there's a kind of, there's a way to skip the uh, requirement here. By the way, this is not the most efficient sun, because it can only do one square at a time. It takes a lot of sun here. <laughs> Remember, every time the miracle is occurring, the timer's basically stopped. So... But we, we do what we gotta do. That's the minimum amount of squares right now. Uh, there's a couple more. We're also keeping the population intentionally lower, because otherwise the people will thank us for the fleece and all the warmth and stuff. At 22 local population, so we're good. We don't get a thank you message. We don't need to hear these people. It's, it is Sunday, yeah. Yeah, and we're coming to the end of the marathon. It's been such a good marathon. It's my favorite, like, my, I, I always look forward to Retrocon every year. RGL team is... Big thumbs up. And like I said, just... We're all here making this a uh, great event. Wouldn't be the same without everyone. We don't care about population here, we just care about sealing the, the layers. Maybe we just leave one of the skulls behind, though. Make sure that all the monsters are clear. Decision. The skull has made the decision. <laughs> I have no way of killing this skull now. <laughs> oh well. Sorry, folks.
All right, this is one of my favorite stages. The tree climb here. I'm gonna manipulate an eyeball here with a little jump slash. And I'm on the Team Axe Gang. There's a Team Spore. So, and there's also a Team Bird that uh, Jangle Storm has uh, went for. Oh. So, we will get this clip. So this is a bad showing for Team Axe. This is a very bad showing for Team Axe. But we're gonna do it. I swear we're going to do it. What is going on? There it is. Alright. If we do lose a couple Team Axe people, I understand. <laughs> Honestly, I should have probably went with the bird. Because the bird's much cooler looking. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that spore gang. to show off the Axe Gang, you know, just, just to make sure. Yeah, Stardust is not doing me any favors. On a really good run, I wouldn't have taken the time to show it off the walk with though. We wouldn't have had the time. I just would have, but then you would have never saw the clip at all. But since we're, we're losing time to the Stardust anyway... So that, that clip like saves about... Uh, it actually really only saves four and a half seconds if you get it first try. We're also going to do a new strat here in the boss rush, so let's go. There you go! Perfect! Stardust showing off the new strat. So that's the new quick kill on the Minotaur. Let's see how the uh, Zub Wolf goes. Come on, Zub Wolf. Come on. Come on. Nope. So Enix liked to name stuff after like old rock bands. So you had obviously like the Led Zeppelin Wolf. You had, uh, you know, March of the Black Queen, Ogre Battle. This wall put the least. <laughs> Stop it, wall. <laughs> Pharaoh lift. So there you buffer B to spawn up and get six quick hits. That's the that's the firewall quick kill. Uh, something Telio like really perfected. That's 
pretty tough fight. Now we gotta do Kalia. Come on, Kalia. Turning around is also uh, possible in this game. It could take up to six frames to turn. Uh, looking a little better than uh, the rest of the run. Stardust. Pretty good there. And here we have Tanzra. And Dazzling Space. Okay. Tanzra's uh, Stardust to match. Which is kind of cool. Also, is about as good as our Stardust. <laughs> the dramatic phase two. Nice. Let's go. No. This is a problem. Come on, Tanzra. One hit away. Okay, let's go. Sub hour by a second. Let's that is the first sub hour run I've ever had in a marathon. Let's go. <laughs> I'm pumped about that. Alright. Thank you for the GG's. I, oh my goodness. I didn't even think I'd get it with the uh, with the axe situation. I really appreciate that. This is an absolute joy to speedrun. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this uh, with Retrothon for four years. Speedrunning for five years. Um, really, again, dedicated to the fans. Uh, everybody that makes these communities what they are uh, just it's been so so such a good energy and you know life-changing for me um i really appreciate that to, to, to be able to do this share this with everyone um act has got a great community uh the quintet discord's fantastic osteoclave there's a lot of active runners bismarck one of which is coming up next telio one this is going to be really exciting um, just thanks for everyone for being here. I'm going to pass the sword over to, uh, to Telio. Telio won. After you beat this game, you unlock the professional mode. Telio is going to take that and kill it, I hope. Wish him luck. Thank you so much again uh, to Retrothon and everybody. Hopefully I'll see you next year. See you next year.